children and children at heart. <laughs> let me see, let me see. Oh, Mick Abrams. Naughty. Martin Barr. Hmm, nice. Rolling Stone. Oh, very naughty indeed. You know what that means. It means it's time to talk to to me. That's right, Nificus. Let's ride. <laughs> Welcome back. I am Omen Said. And I am Nick McGill. We are feckless momes. And this is Talk Told to Me. A solstice celebration in the dark winter of Prague Rock, where we honor the birth of the little baby Ian. <laughs> the tall tree is trimmed, the pussy willow presents are wrapped, and the saucity stockings are hung with care. Nick the Rat King and Omen the Sugar Plum Fairy <laughs> are ready to sit on Father Anderson's lap and revel in the spirit of the holidays. As the old poets said, "'Twas the night before Tolmus, and all through the house, all the bandmates were fluting. John Evan played Strauss. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. I can't take credit for it. I toast you with... Can't you? No. Well, I will. I could, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Omen, I think it's yeah. it's clearly evident that we have a a very special episode of Talk Told to Me this week. That's that's right, Nick. And that is because it is our Yuletide episode. That's right. Happy Solstice, everyone. Happy Yuletide. Happy Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Christmas. Mm, Non-denominational. What do you got? Anything else? Mid-December is also the birthday of the Buddha. Oh, happy Buddha birthday. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. what the song is all about. It, let, we'll fi why don't we find out together, <laughs> Nick? Ooh, I'm jumping the gun. Before we get into that, however, Omen, did, do we have something we need to cover real quick? That's right, Nick. It's time to play What Are You Drinking? Hey, Santa, pass us that bottle, will you? Nick, what are you drinking? Omen, I am drinking in the sight of that short brown man in front of me. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. I don't have any I don't have anything today. I don't have anything. Okay. You clearly have something. We wouldn't be doing this segment if we were both like, no, nothing. I got no. nothing. Yeah. When I realized we were doing the the holiday episode today, Nick, I, mm -hmm. I got home and I mulled myself some cider. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. You happen to have cider on hand? I did, yeah. And I put some cinnamon in it, some allspice, nice. some nutmeg, some s other things, and a little bit of the Christmas spirit, by which I mean pineapple-flavored vodka. Oh, I was not expecting that. It goes a lot better in it than, than you would expect. I, I believe it. I was expecting rum. I think it would be really good with rum. I ran out of rum. Oh, hmm. Somebody drank yeah. all my rum. Where did that go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, besides that, Nick, we do actually have a tweet. Oh, sweet goodness, was unprepared for the tweet. We have a tweet, ladies and gentlemen. Wait for it. Tweet, 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 tweet. See you in the morning. AJ Kerrigan, our our tweeter in chief, our most our our most tweet heavy listener, I would say, tweets. The lads at hashtag talk tall to me are working their way through minstrel, minstrel in the Gallery, a fine album getting the love it deserves. BTW, is there a prettier tall song than Requiem? Mm. Pensive emoji. <laughs> if this lands for anyone out there, go have a listen to at Omen Said and Nick, and then he gives our internet address, fecklessmomes.com. Hey, Jay, the yeah. best solstice gift ever. Really, indeed. Thank you for that absolutely fabulous tweet. How lovely. We, 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 we very much appreciate it. Any 
I don't know. What do you do in Twitter? Any hearts or thumbs ups or retweets or, or anything? Any any activity on that bad boy? I gave it a like. Okay, fair enough. I'll I can appreciate that. Yeah, I did in fact like it. I did <laughs> liked it, and <laughs> I liked it. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you so much, AJ. Greatly appreciated. And I believe drinks and tweets are taken care of, and we can can cut into this 12 days of Tolmus right now and, and get to the, the mince pie that is birthday card at Christmas. Am I right? Nick, is is that the song that we're listening to today? That's the song. That is so exciting. So That's the song. regular listeners will observe that we are departing from our regularly scheduled programming Correct. to bring you this special holiday episode. Mm-hmm. Nick, just for context, what album is birthday card from christmas off of what year was it released what a good question birthday card at christmas is off of the jethro tull christmas album which was released in 2003 wow it was their 21st album and it is the first track off of that album and what is our lineup of musicians looking like for that album in 2003 (laughs) my goodness a mere 17 years ago, Nick. Oh, my gosh. It was the year that you and I graduated high school. That's right. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> when you put it that way, it seems like a long time ago. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it now. But in the, in the, in the Tulliverse, you know, it's different, different scopes. It's like, you know, all of human civilization it was just, you know, the last couple of moments of, of the Earth's history, if you look at it that way. It's just a, just a blink in Tull's eye. So our personnel for the album. Yes. Mr. Ian Anderson on vocals, flute, acoustic guitar, mandolin, piccolo, and percussion. I knew it. Squire Martin Barr, acoustic guitar and electric guitar. Okay. Jonathan Noyce on bass guitar. Mm. Andy Giddings on keyboards and accordion. Doan Perry oh. on drums and percussion. Big boy Doan. Some additional personnel. James Duncan on additional drums and percussion. David Pegg on additional bass guitar and mandolin. And the Sturch String Quartet. S-T-U-R-C-Z. Sturch. 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 I don't know, Nick. I'm just repeating what I'm hearing from you. And those are some those are some serious Russian names in there that I'm not even going to try. Okay. But yeah. We've got a, a first violin, second violin, viola, and cello. Well, Nick, what a fun look through the telescope at the future of the band. Yeah. I recognize most of those names. In fact, I, I recognize, I think, all of those names. I think Jonathan Noyce is the newest of that group. But I've definitely heard Andy Giddings and Don Perry before. Certainly, yeah. I think Martin Barr sounds familiar. Does that name <laughs> ring a bell? Squire Martin Barr? Squire Martin Barr. Does it, does it strum a chord for you, Omen? Ooh, it does, Nick. A deep chord for me. So a little, a little quote from Ian on the song we're covering, Birthday Card at Christmas. Okay, let's hear it. My daughter Gail, like millions of other unfortunates, celebrates her birthday within a gnat's whisker of Christmas. Overshadowed by the great occasion, such birthdays can be flat, perfunctory and fleetingly token in their uneventful passing. The daunting party and festive celebration of the Christian calendar overshadows too, some might argue, the humble birthday of one Mr. J. Christ. That, where did you get that recording of Ian Anderson speaking? <laughs> I, uh, I talked to him about it. That's I, awesome. I reached out to him real That's quick. Great. Yeah. So that actually clears up a question for me because... In listening to the song, I was like, oh, is Ian's birthday near Christmas? And then I looked it up, and of course it's not. It's in August. Very much not, yeah. <laughs> it's as far away from Christmas as you can get almost. My, I think my favorite little tidbit about this album is it came out in September. <laughs> the tail end of <laughs> September. <laughs> well, Christmas celebrations get start earlier every That's year. That's true. Though. That's true. In 2003, they were in September. Yeah, now they're in March, so... Now they're in March. Soon we will reach the Christmas continuum where the decorations for the next Christmas go up before the ones from the previous Christmas have gone down. Yeah, it, it's a space-time paradox, and we will all be sucked into a wormhole. I can't wait. Can't wait. Just can't wait. The pretty lights being stretched out in a wormhole, those Christmas uh, lights are going to look gorgeous, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. I can, fi- I can finally wear my stocking as a bodysuit. <laughs> I've been doing that for years. <laughs> Oh, I've been wearing a body stocking. That's right. 
Oh, that's it. <laughs> so, so Nick, with all of that context. Yeah, so contextual. Shall we put on our festive hats mm-hmm. and have a listen to a birthday card at Christmas? I would love to. Let's, let's do that. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Stars and stones. My goodness. Slap a red nose on me and call me Rudolph, Nick. That was a fun song. What a little, what a light morsel compared to what we're we're used to at this point. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And yet, in typical Toll fashion, it is made with enriched grain, I would say. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It is, it is not white bread. But it is a it is an appetizer, I would say. It's a great starter to the to this album. It's it picks up, it's fast, it's it's bouncy, it's it's got a good energy. It lets you know in terms of the album, this is not the Christmas album that you're gonna put on at the mall to increase sales. Right. This is yeah, this is to make people leave. <laughs> this is <laughs> Get out this of get out of my album mall. <laughs> will obliterate your sales. <laughs> Guaranteed or your money back. Or your money back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start with the music, Nick. Mm, mm-hmm. So right off the bat. With the flute. Yes. That flute is is just so delightful, so fresh in this. It is a winter's breeze on your face when you step out for the first time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wearing your new scarf that your grandmother knit for you. Wearing your new scarf, yeah. It this kind of flute playing from Ian is. I mean, it, I'm actually really happy that we're doing this because it gives us a really fun opportunity to bring the evolution of the sound of Jethro Tull mm-hmm. and Ian mm-hmm. Anderson into relief. Yeah. As we go through the albums in chronological order, I think it's a bit the differences album to album are less apparent, but this gives us such a great contrast. You can see that he has, at this point now, studied the flute, which is something that he did in his early middle ages. I don't remember exactly when. Right, was it the some 80s, point, I think? In the what? I think Wasn't it in the 80s? That sounds right to me. <laughs> in the his story 80s? that I remember was that his daughter, I don't know if it was Gail or I think he has another daughter, started playing the flute in orchestra in school. That's in, right, you know, yep. In middle school. And she was practicing her piece one day. And and he said, oh, darling, you know, here, let me show you how to do that. You play, you know, you, you play like this. And she looked up at him and she was like, daddy, that is not how you finger that note. So wrong. He was like, oh, no. I never learned <laughs> right. how to actually play this instrument in the official way. I wonder if... I wonder if he plays it the right way now, the right way, quote unquote, you know, Uh, after having learned or if he just falls back into muscle memory because he plays it. He that's that's how he had played it for, what, 20, 30 years. Well, I think that the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the figgy pudding, Nick. Mm. And as we can hear in this track, he's using much more accepted techniques. His tone is a lot cleaner. Okay, true. He is doing runs of notes where you can hear every single note yep. in the run. Mm-hmm. It's precise. He still bends the notes and does the fun stuff like that, but it's he's now adding that into a much more trained and conventional and, and appropriate usage of the instrument. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could say that it feels less raw maybe, but but I... I think it's great. It's so pretty. It allows the band to do things that they weren't able to do before. Yeah, I th- I think I think we we do need to acknowledge that this was recorded in 2003 and the recording technology was drastically different than what we've been listening to for the last 5 or 6 albums. There's that as well. But but yes, I I wholeheartedly agree. There is a reason that there is an established way to play an instrument. And and accessing that level of expertise allows you the quick movements and the ability to move from one key to another without having herky-jerky moments in in the sound. It allows for, right. for the flow of of the 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 flow of the overall piece as opposed to that 
that, like you said, that kind of rough feel that that he had initially. And I think that sometimes artists get into a habit of of thinking, well, you know, if I if I train in this, then I'm going to lose my my uniqueness, the mm-hmm. thing that makes me uniquely mm-hmm. me, or my you know my my talent is going to get subsumed by technique. And this is a great example of the fact that that doesn't have to be the case. He right. was Ian. He learned the quote unquote proper fruit flute technique, proper fruit technique. <laughs> This and is how you peel a banana. <laughs> mm. This way. No. Mm. No. <laughs> it's a, the French fruitman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you think you know how to hold a kiwi? It's merde. You must let the kiwi hold you. <laughs> and he just starts crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here we have someone who has learned this technique and incorporated it into his individuality. And it's yeah. great. It's different than what we're hearing in Minstrel, but mm-hmm. it's obviously the same musician just, yeah. you know, for 40 years later. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And and also it is it is a very, it's a very noticeable glance at, at that evolution that you were talking about, but it fits mm. in with the, the rest of the band who has evolved as well in terms of Martin just being an amazing guitarist, but also yeah. we have yet to hear Don Perry or Andy Giddings or, or, or anyone, you know? I think that Don Perry is a great example of the evolution of the sound. His yeah. playing is so precise, mm. which we have precision in Minstrel with Barry Moore Barlow, but Don Perry is bringing that to a whole nother level. Yeah, It's so precise. It's so fast. And he's not only able to play precise, he's able to play with an incredible amount of energy and still keep it precise. And he yeah. knows when he can turn on a dime. It's really amazing to hear. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a good comparison to to Ian's early fluting and late fluting. Like like Barrymore is an is an amazing drummer. Like every time Absolutely. I catch his stuff, I I love hearing what he's doing. And there is clearly expertise there, but there's like an an early rock kind of perfected sloppiness there. Mm, that's a great way of saying it. Whereas as Doan is is a lot more like he studied drumming. It's per, it's perfected it, perfection. It's perfected precision. Yes, and it's, it's and, precise perfection. And w- whether he he did study drumming or not, or whether Barry Moore did or did not study drumming, I can't speak to it. But that's that's just kind of how it feels. Yeah. So this song clips off at a fast pace. Oh yeah, right from the start. Yep. We have the backing of acoustic guitar. <laughs> some really cool acoustic sound in there like a chunga chunga guitar is, is how i would describe it it's really interesting ah yes the, the classic chunga chunga it took martin years to to learn that that's why we're first hearing it now on the christmas album yeah the chunga technique is not mm. one that you take on lightly no it's it, yeah it's a lot it's a big burden but but when years it's perfected yeah in a, in a cave oh hey it's hey, martin Nick. it's martin's birthday today D- the day that we're recording The this? day that we're recording this. Oh, my gosh. November 17th. Happy birthday, Martin. Happy birthday, Martin Barr. You glorious man. I drink to you. Also, we have in in concert with that acoustic, some mango strumming away at a nice fast clip as well. Everything comes right out of the gate in this song. Did you say mango? Mango. Hot mango flush and some mandolin. <laughs> and it's interesting what you said about the recording technology evolving because i do think that just based on the list of people playing on this song Mm -hmm. i think that there are more layers to this to the the strummed string section than we're used to oh okay yeah and rather than being a mess it just it just adds layers and layers and layers to it so you get this really rich this rich sound that isn't muddy yeah and there it's a little cacophonous at, at at first. It's a little because it's so quick and so busy before you even get a chance to to kind of like hone in on what's going on. It I could see how it would be a bit much for like a first-time listener. Sure, it's a deluge. Yeah. 
but if you really sit down and 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 listen and pick out those those distinct pieces like yeah well and the fact that you can listen and pick yes. out various sounds and various instruments is a credit to the to the recording yeah it's also significant to note that at this time i'm sure they were using digital recording techniques rather than analog yes mm -hmm. which just allows you to do so much and there are plenty of audiophiles who argue that with the advent of digital recording we lost a sense of richness in sound. And I think that there is some merit to that, but I think this is a great example, again, of playing to the strengths of the technology and how do you build a rich sound that is still crisp and clear. Yeah. And it's really just a thought experiment to say, oh, well, well, what do you think the Christmas album would have sounded like 40, 40 50 years ago on that technology? We, we can't really know because it's not the tall sound of that era. Right. We can imagine that it would have been a lot grumpier. Very depressing, yeah. yeah. Even more depressing than this this song in terms of Christmas. Christmas alone, I am so alone. <laughs> Tuck myself in. <laughs> in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> what other sounds do we have in this in this track, Nick? We got the mando, we got acoustic. I think we have two acoustic in there, I think. Probably an Ian and a and a Martin is my guess. Well we have at least because because that's what's listed in the in the tracks. Oh, was that the list of musicians playing on the album? Or that's the, the album. That's the the overall album, yeah. Uh, yeah. I do think that we have two acoustic guitars and yeah. we definitely have a mandolin. Mm -hmm. We got of course we got the flute. That flute break after the first big oh verse is pretty extraordinary. <laughs> That's a great example of Ian and Martin playing in unison, something that they've done, you know, up in the regular timeline already. Yeah. But here we're hearing it in a different, again, in a different way. Everything has just become so much more precise. Even Martin, he's, he's yes. playing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Probably in a way just to match what Ian wanted. And I'm sure that, I mean, gen genuinely, I think that Martin Barr could have played any style at any moment in his life. He's just so excellent. Agreed. But it is noteworthy that you can hear that his sound has evolved at this point. Yeah, even though it's so fast and so so rushing there is there is yeah. that precision there I, I i guess i'm just going to keep coming back to the word precision on on to describe this entire song i wrote on my on my notes nick that the the sounds notes and instruments of this song are crammed into the time like yeah. currants in a fruitcake yes yeah there's packed in there and by the end of this song i feel like i i have consumed an, an entire fruitcake I feel that way as as well. I feel I'm I'm exhausted, I'm ashamed. A little bloated, a little <laughs> uh little too much booze in that fruit cake. I need a nap? Need a nap. What else do we want to say musically? I mean I mean I feel like we've talked about the energy, the precision. There's it's in a it's in four four time if that if anyone cares. It's like but going back to your having cr them cramming it in, like it's a they get so much in in that four. <laughs> like there's, I know it's it's really impressive to think it's just a simple like they're not playing with any prog timing or anything. It, it's just four four, it's but just, they still four, have four. some rhythms that that shake it up a bit. Sure, sure, even sure. that main riff. Yeah. It's a great way that they're contrasting these really quick maybe 16th notes with the more legato flowing phrases yeah it, it produces an interesting kind of pull and and stretch of time even within this pretty strict time signature and that that's actually a good reminder for those of us less musically inclined that being in 44 is is in no way a constraint you know, oh, no. the, so much can happen in that four four with the the variation in notes. Even if it were just Ian's flute, like I'm, as as we've heard and will continue to hear, in the most quote unquote basic of time signatures, like that man can can go to town and and create full full symph symphonic 
feelings just with his flute in 4-4. Yeah. The thing that he's doing a lot in this song is bending the note. Mm, mm. How, so, how does one bend a note on a flute? It's kind of a it's kind of a cool technique. There there are I, I, I think there are some instruments that you can't really bend notes on. There are some that you can with more ease. And each of them has a, a specific technique. The way you do it on a flute is you play the flute by blowing air across the blow hole, just like on a whale. Mm -hmm. That's how you play a whale. The, the yeah. correct keys. And then you roll the flute either toward or away from you oh. to change the angle of the air. Wow. You have to simultaneously adjust your embouchure so that the stream yeah. of air is going across in the right way, but you can achieve this this bend in the note, this note, you know, tweaking upward or tweaking, tweaking sharp or tweaking flat, if you will. And he's doing it in a really amazing way because he's almost he's almost tricking you in your ear into hearing the note bending from one to the other. And I think, yeah. I think what he's doing is rolling from one note and then switching his fingering and his embouchure and the flute position right. really subtly so that you just hear it's it's that it's that very opening note. It's that bell yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. I mean, that's neat. You know, we 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 give Ian a lot of lip service on this podcast, Nick, and and boy, and am I lip tired? A lot, of course, but but this is just a, a moment to remember. Like, he's really an extraordinary musician. There, there is a reason he 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 is where he is. Yeah. 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 In Scotland. In Scotland. There's a reason he's in Scotland. <laughs> Stay in Scotland until you've thought about what you've done. <laughs> I imagine you can't bend the note on a woodwind. Well, I hate to break it to you, Nick, but the flute is a woodwind. Oh, a reeded instrument. I think that you can. I really? don't know how, though. I've never played a reeded instrument. But I've had many a reeded instrument. Play me. I just, I just choked on an allspice. <laughs> Ooh, but put them in hole. So, well, so lyrics, Omen, lyrics. Yeah, yeah, lyrics, Nick. Let's look at them. Let us, let us peruse for the next fifteen minutes. We're going to look at the lyrics quietly. I suggest everyone else look at the lyrics quietly. We'll get back to you. Well, <laughs> have a juice box. Insert fifteen minutes of silence. Got a birthday card at Christmas? It made me think of Jesus Christ. Got a birthday card at Christmas? It made me think of Jesus Christ. Well, so we've heard the anecdote from Ian. This was inspired by his daughter who has a, presumably a December birthday. Yep. And whose celebrations are often overwhelmed. Often overshadowed. Yep. By, by Christmas celebrations. Yeah. It said, I love you in small letters. I simply had to read it twice. It said, I love you in small letters. I simply had to read it twice. Nick, why do you think he had to read it twice? Because he didn't spot it the first time? Is that why? Is that a note about the... Because he'd forgotten his bifocals? Just because, like, he, he passed over it, you know? He read it so quickly, he mm. didn't see that? But what is that... Could be For that, sure. could be that. Yeah. Or, or or perhaps could be that he had the realization, like if you literally got a birthday card on Christmas, you might think, oh, that's funny. I'm, it's Christmas. I have a birthday card. Mm, what's what's Christmas about? Isn't isn't there a birthday involved? Oh, or or maybe he was just, maybe it's just a surprise that it's a birthday card instead of a Christmas card. Oh, it could be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe he had to, to read it twice. It was like a double take, you know? It's like, oh, this is, yeah, this is yeah, happy yeah. birthday, not not Merry Christmas. Right. Wood smoke curled from blackened chimneys. The smell of frost was in the air. Wood smoke curled from blackened chimneys. The smell of frost was in the air. A little atmosphere for you. Yep. Polar star hovered in the blackness. I looked again. It wasn't there. Polar star hovered in the blackness. I looked again. Ah, now, Nick, I think that that line is deeply symbolic, thema thematic, mm -hmm. emblematic. Symptomatics. Symptomatic. <laughs> yeah, indeed. What is what is the pole star, Nick? The pole star is the north star. It is the final 
star in the Big Dipper. It's also the shoulder of Ursa Major. Is that right? Or the it's nose? The, it's the final star in the Little Dipper, actually. Oh, it's the Little Dipper. Oh, okay. Yeah, Big Big Dipper points toward it. Ah, uh, I've been walking in circles for, you, for no days. Wonder. and <laughs> You ended up... Completely lost. So it is. It is Ursa Minor then, if it's if it's the Little Dipper, and I believe it's the nose in Ursa Minor. Yeah, 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 or the tail. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Polaris, the North Star. So, but it's also it's also the star that the three wise men followed to get to Baby Jesus in the manger. It's possible. Whether I mean, there are sort of alternate theories about that. There's one theory that 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 the biblical star was a comet. Oh, correct. Yep. Yep. But whether or not literally it was one or the other, I do think that that the reference to the pole star in the black hovering in the blackness is a reference to to the the star which the wise men yeah. purportedly followed. I also think that you know the north star is what you use to guide yourself. Right. And for many people, for Christians, Jesus is the guide post mm -hmm. of their faith. Right. He is he is leading them in in their way of life to their salvation, et cetera, right. et cetera. He's a fixed a fixed point in the in the in the world. And if if you're so reliant on this this thing, uh, th the entirety of your life and, and it being so important for your in your mind, your salvation to right. look again and see that it's not there. Mm. That is for a Christian would obviously be shocking. I think in terms of, of Ian commenting on it, I think it's just just the lack of of the reason for Christmas being around. I I agree that that the star is covered up with all the faff. Yeah. It's the 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 keep the Christ in Christmas. Right. Yeah. There's something that I particularly like about this metaphor, though, because the North Star, many people falsely believe that the North Star is the brightest star in the sky. Mm. It is not. I think that's Regulus or something. It's a different one. But so you really have to look for it. Yeah. You have to find it. And so, so this idea that as we go on with this song, people have showered me with presents where their minds were, were fixed on other things. People have showered me with presents while their minds were fixed on other things. So you sort of list all these bright, shiny objects that can cover up the true faint light. Yeah, it's it's really nice because it's couched in that, oh, people are overlooking the fact that it's my birthday because it's Christmas, but but ultimately it's that metaphor of the birthday is is the Jesus, is the Christ in Christmas. It's his birthday. That's why we're celebrating. Exactly. And people over are overlooking the birth of Christ because of sleigh bells, bearded red suit, uncles, pointy trees, and angel wings. Sleigh bells, bearded red suit, uncles, pointy trees, and angel wings. Yeah. Yeah. Mo modern day, modern day Christmas faff and capitalism. Which you know me, Nick. I love faff. A little bit less keen on capitalism. Yep. But I, you know, it's enchanting all the little glittering lights and, and the boughs everywhere. What does it have to do with Jesus? Very little. Practically nothing. Yeah. But, you know, I enjoy a Terry's chocolate orange as much as the next man. The Christmas tree is straight out of paganism. Yes, Druidic indeed. belief. It's it's the Catholic Church moved in on their territory and was like, we want you to celebrate Jesus. We also have a tree. Would that make it easier yeah. for you to come over right. here? We notice you have a tree. We also have it. Is that tree made out of cardboard? No, no. It's we've always done trees. Are you, are you sure? It looks just it's like a Polaroid of a tree. Nope. This is the tree that we celebrate with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, I guess. I mean, it's that or death, right? Oh, yeah. We'll kill you. No. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely. <laughs> We have the fire lit. So <laughs> I love I love the next line here. I am the shadow in your Christmas. I am the corner of your smile. Yeah. Perfunctory in celebration. You offer content, but no style. I am the shadow in your Christmas. I am the corner of your smile. Perfunctory in celebration. You offer content, but no style. Yeah, we're we're getting a little darker. We're getting a little more biting. It's a bit a bit of a threat, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It 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 reminds me. 
It's a more bubblegum version of Christmas song. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah. It's some similar sentiments. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The Christmas spirit is not what you drink. The Christmas spirit is not what you drink. Hey, Santa, pass us that yeah. bottle, will you? Pass us that bottle, with you? And then we get into the actual, the actual Jesus portion. Well, paragraph three, stanza three. Yeah. Just before we get there, I want to go back to those, those last lines. Mm. Cause I think that, I think that we, that the shadow in your Christmas, the corner of your smile, I, I think that is Jesus. And then I think that we have the counter argument. We have the masses re replying, yes, but you're perfunctory in celebration. You offer content, but no style. We want style and celebration. Oh. You only offer deep thoughts and importance and, you know, and infinity. Hmm. I like that. We, we prefer all this, all this style because Christmas is very stylish. See, I, I, I took it the opposite. I think it's there. They're just like, they just flood it. There's angels and there's, there's mm. reindeer and there's snowmen. And it's, it's, it's just all flashing, literally flashing lights. It's all yeah, content, yeah. but there's no, it's lost a structure. It's lost, lost something to, to build upon of meaning. It's, it's really just flooding the market. And I mean, we're right. seeing it now. Like I've, I've seen Christmas decoration. We're recording November 17th. I've seen Christmas decorations since before Halloween. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a bit of a special year. Fair enough. You know, whatever, whatever makes you feel good, honestly, at this point. Not seeing Christmas decorations. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident I'm an outlier in that, but still. One of the, one of the best parties I ever went to was a Halloween party. Oh, I like that idea. Everyone dressed up in costumes and uh, gave each other presents and there was a tree. We all had some, some snacks. So it was just a, a, a fancy dress party on Christmas. Well, it was a Halloween party. It wasn't on either date. Oh, oh, okay. It was, it was sort of in between. It combined the elements, you see. I, I get that. It's, it's, yeah. it's Venn diagrammed beautifully. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. You were, you were about to take us through the third stanza. Yeah. Just now, now we're into the, the full force religious aspect. Jesus, he gets birthday cards too. He got gold trinkets and cheap frankincense, some penny baubles for his tree. It's a reminder, you know, if I've been, I've been hinting at it for the last two stanzas. Let me get into right. it. Like this is this is what he got. He got presents. This is why we Christmas. It is interesting how Ian lays it out in such a way where Jesus creeps up on you slowly and from the shadows, like he's coming out of a dark alley at you. Yeah, yeah. Because probably for I'm assuming for most Catholics, most admitted Catholics, who most non-lapsed Catholics, I guess we'll say. Okay. It's very easy to get swept away in that, and especially if you're like an Easter Christmas Catholic where you just go go to church then. There is that that subtle reminder in the back of your mind. Mm. You know, so it's 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 easy to get to get carried away, but it, the the reason is still there. Jesus is the reason for the season, if we want to get it pull out another uh, standard that my grandmother used to say. Mm. You know, last year, my wife is a Christian, and <gasps> we went, I know, I know, shocking. We went to a, a really lovely Christmas service at a church, an Episcopal church here in New York, and they had been, they were in the, the process of renovating their facility, and so they were holding services in- It's called a church. <laughs> yes, they were renovating their church, thank you. <laughs> and so they were holding services in literally a construction trailer. Oh, wow. Parked on the street uh -huh. in New York City. And so there was just room enough for maybe a dozen people maximum. Mm -hmm. And it was great. There were, because it was so bare. There were hardly any decorations. Yeah. They had a pianist at the back who played some lovely classical music. There was a very brief sermon. There wasn't a lot of you know, fluffy aphorisms or, yeah. or anything. It was just a couple of readings, some very nice hymns. And that was it. And I thought, this is the best, one of the best 
religious services I've ever been to and certainly one of the most profound Christmas services that I've ever been to. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's that's the point. You take out the pomp so and circumstance and you get down to it. And that's that's the whole point. That's the way Jesus would have done it, you know. Well, and except, it's how the early Christians did it, in fact, because yeah. they were, you know, they knew that if they worshipped in public, they would be killed. Well, or also, yeah, yeah. Persecuted. But Jesus would have ripped an, an awesome solo on the guitar. But other than that, like, that's exactly <laughs> how it would have been. He did indeed. <laughs> Little known fact about Jesus. Guitar like the, enthusiast. <laughs> more like the guitar. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Have some time off for good behavior. 40 days, give or take a few. Have some time off for good behavior. 40 days, give or take a few. Nick, this is the one line that really confuses me. He wandered the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, okay. At first, I thought it was a resurrection thing, but that was only three days. Three days. Moses did it for 40 years. Oh, no. Yeah, what was the 40 days and 40 nights? That's what I was that thinking. That was the flood. For, yeah, that was the rain. Okay, I am woo, I am so lapsed. I am... <laughs> You're, you're prolapsed. Uh, ooh, ooh, embarrassing. Yeah, okay, so that doesn't, that, that, yeah, the 40 days is the rain for Noah. The 40 years is Moses. Oh, oh, no, no, you were right on the first one. After being baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days and nights in the Judean desert. Oh. During the time, Satan came to Jesus and tried to tempt him, Jesus having refused each temptation Satan then departed, and Jesus returned to Galilee to begin his ministry. So that was that's the temptations of Christ. Oh. Much like the temptations of the Buddha under the Bodhi tree by the armies of Mara. Hmm, similarities in religious figures? You don't I say. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. <laughs> hey there, sweet baby Jesus. Let's oh. share a birthday card with you. Mm hmm <laughs> Hey there, sweet baby Jesus. Let's share a birthday card with you. So that's yeah. birthday card at Christmas. Nick, any any general thoughts on this song? I like it. It's fun. It's not this this style of tall is not my favorite style of tall. Really? Mm hmm It just just this this era of tall is not my favorite era. Okay. It's that point where where it, if Ian had retired, I would not have been upset. Mm, wow. You know, or if he just kept playing like the, the early stuff live. Totally fine with that. Yeah. Totally fine with that. But just, just the, the new content, I'm, it just, it never really struck me. And I don't know if it's just because it, I was so ingrained in my early years and in, in, their, in their early stuff or, or what. I don't know. I don't know. But, but I'll tell you, if, if I had listen to this or thick as a brick two or gosh what was what was before that it was a mm. oh no it was uh it was dot com although i i do really like dot com yes um so it's it's post dot com that that really get, gets gets rough i don't know if i would be in the tall if that were the case you know well nick i wonder if it's if it's an issue of what sound jump starts your your love of tall i mean yeah. maybe there's sort of a, a duckling thing going on that whatever tall sound you first hear you imprint upon and yes. follow it around yeah yeah i th i think that's most likely the case especially because we were both so young when we started listening to tall yes you know? but as as is apparent through our studies nick jethro tall is not a mama duck that's true. Jethro Tull will kick you out in the rain and make you fend for yourself. <laughs> they will. And they taste terrible. Oh, my God. I've eaten so much Jethro Tull hoping I've just had a bad one. It's it's not, It doesn't get any Roasted better. Roasted with oranges. No nope. good. Tull a l'orange. <laughs> Peking <laughs> Tull. No, nope, no, nope, doesn't work. Tull, tull Cracklin. Oh, that I could get behind. Maybe some, yeah. some Tull Confit. Maybe mm. some... Yeah. F foie foie tall, Jethro mm. Gua. I don't know. <laughs> That's a goose. Never mind. <laughs> well, we'll work on that. We'll come back to you with that we'll one. We'll workshop it. <laughs> well, Nick, I think that I speak for all of us here at Talk Tall to Me 
when I say to our listeners, I hope that this day, whatever you are celebrating or not celebrating, is filled with light and generosity and thoughtfulness and the realization of the nature of the universe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I I don't subscribe to the whole Christmas thing, but yeah, let's let's appreciate things. Uh, this year let's... this year in particular, let's let's really learn to appreciate things, please. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Well, Nick, next week we will be returning to our regularly scheduled programming with Correct. a little song off of the minstrel album. The final song off of the album proper and the final song of the year. Mm-hmm. It is Grace. What a lovely way to end the year, Nick, with a bit of grace. Yeah, it, it's a nice, it is a lovely little ditty. But until next week, I don't need a birthday card. I don't need a Christmas present. I just need five stars. Yeah. That's all. If you're wondering how you can support the podcast, follow the star in the <laughs> eastern sky and then follow another one and another one and another one and one more and then give those stars to us on iTunes. <laughs> yes. Give, collect them and then give them to us. Yeah. Until next week, I remain... Omen said. I humbly am Nick McGill. Together, we are proud to be feckless momes. And this, for your and our enjoyment, is Talk Tall to Me. This is just a Christmas song. Oh, come up here. Oh, uh, Santa, Santa. Hello, little one. Uh, oh, your beard is real. It is, it is. I spend all year grooming it just for you. Now tell me, little one, what, what would you like this holiday Santa, season? Uh, this year for Christmas, I want a blue bike. You got it, kiddo. Yay! Oh, 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 oh next in line, hello. Hello. Santa. What would he... Oh, hello, Santa Claus. Hi, little oh. one. What would you uh, like for yes, this holiday? Yes, this year I want a pair of black ferrets. Black parrots. You no, got ferrets. it. Next. Uh, ferrets. Next in God line. God damn it, Santa Claus. <laughs> hello. Boy, you're sprightly and dressed nice. What, what would you like for Christmas? Um, oh, hello, Mr. Santa Claus. Oh, my, you're much bigger than I thought. Um, well, this year I've been really working to get on the nice list, and I kind of want something very special for Christmas. Um, I know it's a lot to ask, but is there any chance that I could have Talk Tall to Me as a proud member of the Feckless Moms Audio Network? That one I can give to you right now. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle! <laughs> Mommy! Daddy! It's a miracle! <laughs>